Dailies and mental gin, goys and burls, ratonization here with some very helpful information. Now, first of all, sorry if I sound weird. I am. Um, <laughs> it's actually about 15 minutes to 9 at night, and I just woke up. Why? Because my insomnia kept me up all night, so I've been sleeping all day. So I'm nocturnal. So it's going to be another rough night for me. So I'm very sorry if I sound tired. I am very tired. Anyway, guess who I managed to get a hold of? The writer of the Candle Cove Creepypasta. His name is Chris Straub? Straub? Told, probably totally butchered that. Anyway, I managed to track him down and find his email. Now, why did I email him? Well, for those of you who have seen my Candle Cove videos, as few as they may be, you've seen that I've debunked the screaming episode, and I've also complained about the fact that I don't know what I was remembering. I actually kind of explain it in the email that I wrote to him. Anyway, so, um, here's the email that I wrote to Chris. I'm sure you get a lot of emails like this one. You wrote the Candle Cove creepypasta, right? I want to know what inspired you to write it, and here's why. Before I read the creepypasta and looked into it, I recognized the name Candle Cove, and even some of the characters. I have a distinct memory that pops up when I hear the name. However, when I looked further into it, not only does a lot of the show not match up to what I'm remembering, but it also seemed to not exist at all. I asked a lot of people who were older than me if they've ever heard of the show, and all said no. The only people who told me they remembered it were younger kids who wanted to seem special. I went out of my way to debunk the so-called screaming episodes that the liars were telling me they remembered. Then I myself was called a liar for feeling like I remembered a cartoon called Candle Cove in the early to mid-90s, and I did not like that because I know I'm not lying. I could be wrong, but I'm not lying. Then someone told me about false memory phenomenon, where certain things can trigger false memories, and since I don't have a good memory to begin with, I started to think this was what was going on. Maybe I saw something similar. Maybe I dreamed about something similar. I don't know. It drove me up the wall because I wanted to know why something that didn't exist sparked such a big reaction in my brain. It's humiliating, actually. And that's why I would like to know what inspired you to write that creepypasta. Was it based off of something? I hope you understand why this is important for me to know. Please respond. I honestly didn't expect him to write back. I really didn't. But he did. Now, before I read the email that he shared with me, note that, like I said in my, my email, when I saw the pictures, the logos and stuff for Candle Cove, I genuinely felt like I recognized it. I really did. And for those of you who know me well, my code of honor is honesty, and I would never, ever, ever, I'm going to do a Chris Jericho thing here, ever lie to you. Okay? <laughs> I know that's kind of hard to believe, that somebody over the internet <laughs> doesn't lie, but it's just... I know there's a lot of sick people out there. There's a lot of people you can't trust. I mean, <laughs> trust me when I say I can't trust a lot of people out there. And that's because I have been lied to. And if you read the comments on the videos where I'm debunking the screaming episode, you can see why. How many people genuinely said they remembered it. Now, here's the thing. Are all of them lying? No. Some people, if you read their comments, have very light, vague memories of Candle Cove with details that don't exactly match up to the creepypasta. These are the people who are like me, who seemed to get a spark of false memories after seeing the creepypasta or hearing a narration of it and whatnot, seeing pictures of it. Because remember, I saw pictures and stuff before I read the creepypasta, so I was like, oh, I know what that is, and then all of a sudden it doesn't exist? Yeah, I was kind of creeped out. <laughs> As for the people 
who say they clearly remember the screaming episode, or they clearly remember what channel it was on, or anything that's found on the on the Candle Cove wiki. The Candle Cove wiki is fake. It is fake. And anybody who says to the exact detail that they remember this show is lying. And it messed with me. I tried to tell myself that these people are just trying to mess with you, Raytana. But at the same time, there's always that hint of doubt that says, well, what if they're telling the truth? Well, <laughs> turns out they weren't. Now, there's a difference between lying and being wrong. I was wrong. I was not lying. Lying would be if I knew damn well I never saw Candle Cove and I told you that I did. That would be lying. But, well, let me just, uh, let me read the email that he sent me. <laughs> First of all, I have to, uh, I don't, I don't think he did this on purpose, but he started out with hello, hello, which automatically <laughs> made me think of Phone Guy from Five Nights at Freddy's. Anyway, so yes, I wrote it. I assure you that Candle Cove was completely invented and not based on anything remotely related. Anyone saying they've seen the show or the episodes or any of the art that's out there is all fan-made, and it's all because people like having fun with it as a hoax. The details in the story are vague in the same way that memories from childhood are vague. I think this was the real success of Candle Cove. I made all the names in the story really generic-sounding. It's been way more effective at creating false memories than I ever thought possible. It feels as if maybe you could remember little things of something. But I think it's our shared childhood fears and weirdness around badly made low-budget puppets. I never intended it to be a hoax, or considered a real show. It was just a short story I wrote on a horror fiction site I managed. He gave me links to two interviews to talk about it. I don't mind answering questions about it, especially if it puts people at ease. It's sort of fun as a hoax others have created around it, but only to a point. Now, when I read that, a huge weight was lifted off of me. Because for, god, I don't even know how many years I've been trying to figure this mystery out. I don't remember when I first saw Candle Cove thing. Hang on, I have to... So I first heard of Candle Cove March 22nd, 2013. For almost two full years now, I have been trying to figure out why the hell I remember a show that didn't exist. Not only did the writer of this creepypasta succeed in creating false memories in people, but he did it on purpose. And that's what makes this an amazing creepypasta. It did its job. It made you think you remembered something. It made you think that something like that could have existed where and that no one else seemed to remember. And it made you question your own memory. Now, my memory is really bad. And again, here's my honesty. When I was 18, I tried to commit suicide. And because of that, I have long-lasting short-term memory loss. It sucks. <laughs> it's not exactly the funnest thing to um, to live with. So not only is my memory bad already, but the fact that this person managed to purposefully strike that false memory phenomenon in so many people, it's just, it's, uh, it's absolutely <laughs> genius! It's genius! This person is a genius! I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at one of the interviews. And appar apparently, Chris Straub, um, Straub, has a lot of different series um, and media and comics and stuff online. I think I want to read uh, the part of this specific interview. Uh, this is the second link that I got. Now, I had to scroll down through um, the beginning of the interview to where Candle Cove is actually mentioned. So, and now we turn to the subject of Candle Cove, the story of a forum thread about a local kids' show from the 1970s for your short story collection, Igor Falls. I, itcher? Icker? Falls? That it's gone viral. How do you feel about how popular the story is? This is another one of these things I have done in a hurry that really resonated with people. Candle Cove must have been written vaguely enough so that it let everyone apply their own childhood fears to it. I had a lot of strange discomfort around old television, specifically KLCS, a public television station in Southern California. They didn't have the budget that KCET, the big boys PBS affiliate had, 
so most of their programming was bad work prints of 1970s film strips for classrooms. One of these was called Inside Out, and it explored social mores through a scripted play. But the play was open-ended. After the film stopped, the teacher was supposed to lead a discussion to ground what the students just watched. There's no teacher at home to do that. If there was a workbook that came with the series, I didn't have it. I watched these alone on summer vacation while my parents were at work. These morality plays designed to be unfinished, uncertain. In that context, they were really, really terrifying. Which, if any, of the unofficial sequels written for it are your favorites? Oh man, none of them are my favorites. The reason is that they all try very hard to explain what Candle Cove is, when not knowing is why the story resonated. There's this string of fanfics where it's revealed that Candle Cove is the work of an old Nazi named Altman ba ba Bachheimer. Bachheimer. You tell me why a Nazi would be hanging out in West Virginia or Kentucky in 1971, and why he he'd bother making a puppet show to scare kids. I guess Nazi is shorthand for the most evil thing anyone can think of. Then it goes on. One of our previous interview subjects, Jonathan Woshik, mentioned that there was a movie production of the story that didn't even try to contact you or anything because they thought the story was public domain. What was that experience like? Great. <laughs> wow. It, it doesn't say that. That's, that's me saying that. that somebody actually thought that the story was public domain. That's terrible. The great problem with the internet that I think we're actually overcoming is the idea that content just springs out of nowhere, for free, for everyone to enjoy and profit from. And I have to walk this line of being excited that people like my work enough to do stuff like that, while having to be the bad guy and say you're actually not allowed to make a movie based on someone else's property. The worst case was this Urban Legends TV show in Urgway that actually made puppets and sets for a 10 minute long Unsolved Mysteries-esque expose of this American legend. They had some lore expert and everything making up how no one knew where Candle Cove came from. It was the first time I had to find a lawyer and make threats, and it happened at the same time I was talking to a production company about film rights. I was not built for that kind of thing. I wanted to throw up every night. Phew, I don't blame you, dude. So, that's just a little snippet of an interview with him. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this puts my mind so at ease. Because now, I don't have to tell people I thought I remembered it. Because I can just say I didn't. <laughs> I didn't remember it, that's all. I don't... <laughs> it created false memories. Whether my mind was piecing together small things from my childhood, I may have seen small snippets of different cartoons on the TV I may have watched. I was so young, I can't fully remember back then. I may remember the specific room that I was in when watching whatever it was that I remember being Candle Cove, but why? Why did I remember a room? Why did I remember what the room looked like? and what the TV looked like. Well, maybe I saw something on a public show, on a public channel, or something, that felt similar to something that the creepypasta was describing. And again, false memory phenomenon. The mind is a very powerful machine that people take for granted, that people ruin, that people don't know how to feed. People don't know how to take care of the mind, how to experience the mind, how to understand your thoughts, and I don't think we ever will. But the fact of the matter is, the case is closed. It's closed. And I couldn't feel more relieved that I finally have an answer. I finally know the secret behind Candle Cove. And because of the public interviews, it wasn't so secret. Now you guys need to be careful though, because there are hoaxes out there. And there are still people who are going to argue that they do remember Candle Cove. There is a such thing as chronic lying, where some people, and I've known somebody to do this, not gonna say names, some people honestly think that what they're saying is true, but they're purposely lying. It's, it's different than being wrong and telling the truth. It's like, have you guys ever seen that Family Guy episode where they're talking about um, a stubborn, stubborn as a mule and it shows a donkey arguing with his roommate about how Kevin Bacon wasn't in Footloose? 
Well, everybody knows Kevin Bacon was in Footloose, he was the star of the show. But the donkey kept arguing, No, he wasn't! No, he wasn't! No, he wasn't! No, he wasn't, man! No, he was Eehaw! Eehaw! <laughs> it's very, very, very funny. And then there's that South Park episode where Cartman has taken credit for Jimmy's fish stick joke and genuinely believes that he made up the joke. It's people who are pathological liars, people who lie constantly, it's some kind of thing in the mind where it's like they have to lie. And it's terrible. Again, my code of honor is honesty. And I'm not gonna lie if I can fucking help it. <laughs> well, again, unless it's to myself. I tend to lie to myself a lot. And I'm trying to get out of the habit. Like, when people, people ask, uh, like, are you okay? I used to say, I'm fine. When everything wasn't fine, I'm trying to break out of that habit. I'm trying to tell myself, what are you hiding from these people? There's nothing to hide. You don't need to lie about how you feel. And unfortunately, we've grown up in a society where <laughs> it's almost like we have to lie about how we feel. Like, we can't be honest about what we think. So, for the past couple of years, when somebody's asked me how I was doing, and I genu genuinely felt like I wanted to just, like, bang my head against the wall, I'd say, not so great. Or, honestly, terrible. Now, whether or not they wanted to inquire further, that was their choice. But I gave them a truthful answer, and that puts my own mind at ease. Because, even if it's the smallest of lies, even if it's as much as, what's wrong? Nothing. There's still that little, it's like a bug, munching on your brain, going, tell the truth. Tell the truth. You know damn well something's wrong. What's wrong with you? Why would you say that nothing's wrong when there is something wrong, you horrible fucking liar? That's what happens to me when I tell the smallest of harmless little lies. And that's why I don't lie, because it has an effect on my psyche. I, I can't do it. If I want to stay sane, well, as sane as I can get with my condition, if I want to try to be at peace with myself, I've got to try and, you know, keep myself as clean as possible. I embraced my code of honor when I couldn't handle the lying anymore. When other people lied to me so much, and I began to tell how people lie. I began to notice when people do it. I began to learn the inflections people use in their voice began to notice facial expressions, body quirks, began to tell if somebody I am in the same room with is lying. When I started to be able to do that, and I began to know just how dishonest the world is, I, I was fed up with it, and I said I didn't want to be that person. I didn't want to be one of these people. I didn't want to be one of the people that you can't trust. I'm a Scorpio, and Scorpios are known for loyalty, and I have been the most loyal friend to my friends. I have been the most loyal girlfriend to Mike. And I'm not going to stop. And I'm not going to change being an honest person just because it makes people feel uncomfortable or because it might hurt somebody's feelings. But I'm not going to change who I am. Not for you, not for anybody, and especially not for Anateer. <laughs> I use Anateer's name, again, as a metaphor for the quote-unquote bad part of my mind. But I'm sorry for those of you who genuinely thought I was lying, who have a hard time believing that there is an honest person on the internet, because remember, I'm not just a person on the internet. I'm a person in the world, on the planet Earth. I'm human. I bleed red just like everybody else. And remember that, you know, my life on the internet isn't much different than my life outside of the internet. I'm the same person. I don't put on a different personality. I don't act like another person. I act like myself. Unfortunately, that does mean that sometimes I have to put on a smile when I don't feel so much like smiling. But honestly, it's hard for me to hide my emotions anyway, so even when I'm in a bad mood, usually my smile doesn't reach my eyes, and you can tell. You can tell that something's wrong. 
Anyway, I think this video has gone on long enough. I'm very tired. I hope this sheds some light on you guys, help put some minds at ease for those of you who had the same experience that I did, and I really hope that those of you who are lying, knowingly lying about remembering Candle Cove, I hope you stop. I really do. Because for people like me, if you lie to people like me, you're gonna mess with our heads. And you're gonna make us go crazy for two years trying to figure out what the hell was going on enough to where you actually tracked well, I got help tracking down the creator. In fact, who helped me? Let me check. So on DeviantArt, a user named Mad Jans helped me track down Chris. And I thank you for that. And it's, uh, it's really put my mind at ease. And I'm glad that I can just let this go. And now anytime... Anybody ask me if I remember Candle Cove, I could just point them to this video and be like, Go here! It'll explain everything. Anyway, thank you for listening to my rant and shiznit. I'm not looking forward to trying to sleep through the night since I've already been sleeping for a few hours. Oh, I hate being in Sonic. I hate being nocturnal! Anyway. Make sure to subscribe, spread the word of awesome, become a Raytonite. If you haven't already, I suggest watching my two videos where I debunk the screaming episode of Candle Cove, and also watch the video Let's Complain About Candle Cove, where I really nitpick my mind in believing something that didn't exist. Those videos will probably help you understand what I was going through when I was remembering something that didn't exist. Anyway. I'll see you later, alligators and crocodiles. Goodbye!